In the last video on AngularJS, we went over setting up a basic project. We got things working and then we're able to actually click on a button and get our counter to actually work in the browser. If we look at that again, in the browser you can see once we do a couple clicks, we get our counts going. Now we're actually ready to display a little bit of data. To do that, if we'll jump into our main JS, if we'll look at our save function that we currently have, you see we're setting the HTML of the div based on the data class. That's one way to do it, but it isn't necessarily the easiest way to deal with it. Angular comes with some templating built in so that you can actually output things the way you want to in HTML. However, to get started, we're going to add our controller. It's going to be a name controller. And then we're going to add to our HTML a div so that we can use that name controller. So we're going to create a div with ng controller of name controller. What we want to do is we want to actually output some data. Let's go over to our controller again and we'll put a scope.users variable in on the scope. And then we're going to add two objects to that user's variable. This way we can actually show some data in our browser that comes from our JavaScript code. In this case, we're hard coding our objects, but you might actually code it in to do some Ajax calls to your back end. Now on our HTML, we're actually using a controller. Let's do a couple of things to actually see this data. We're going to create an unordered list, a UL. And then in our list, we're going to do an ng repeat. Then we're just going to do a loop of user and users, since users is on the scope. Then inside of our li, we're going to do a user.firstName and a user.last name. And if you'll notice, this is the exact same type of open and close that we use for our Django templates and our Jinja templates. So this is actually going to error and it's not going to work very well if we try to run it as it is now. Django comes with a great built-in to deal with this called verbatim. So we use the verbatim tag and then our end verbatim tag. This means it's going to put out that li line exactly like it sees it and it's not going to try to process anything in it. That way we can continue to use the templating that Angular comes in and use our Django templates as well. If we look at this in our browser, we'll go back to our browser and we refresh the page, you'll see very, very quickly the open and close of user.firstName, user.lastName, and then it populates with the names in our list. So as you can see, it actually shows our first name and last name. The reason you saw a blip there real quick where you could see the templating was because since we're loading Angular at the end of the page, it actually rendered out all of that content first and then rendered the page and then filled everything up. If we go back to our HTML file, we're going to go ahead and remove the verbatim. If we were doing this with Jinja, you would do raw and end raw, much like verbatim with Django templates. So there is that capability inside of Jinja as well. However, adding these all over the place can be kind of frustrating, especially if you forget. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to add a custom open and close around all of our variables that is going to be specifically used for Angular. What I've generally used in the past in projects is the curly brace open and then a bracket and then another curly brace open. So it's just a bracket in between the standard open and close that we're used to with our templates. So if we'll convert our user first name and user dot last name to these, we can start using them once we make a minor tweak to our JavaScript. We'll open up our JavaScript file and we'll paste in an app.config. And what this does is it has an interpolate provider start symbol and end symbol. And you just put in there the symbol that you want to use to start and end. It could be a star star slash slash. You could use a word. It doesn't matter. Like whatever it sees as an open and close for these is what you'll use in your templates for Angular. So with that said and done, let's jump back into our browser and refresh the page and you'll see it blip on with those template open and close. And then it populates our users that we have or our names that we have on our back end. That is how you can basically use the templating that's built into Angular with Django, either using the verbatim tag with Jinja, the raw tag, or set up uh, custom open and closes that you can use with Angular that works well with Jinja and Django. Now that we know how to set up our basic Angular project and we can display stuff on our HTML page, join us for the next video where we actually start doing a little bit of interaction with forms.